Hello everybody, this is Ronald at Win911 and thank you for joining us for our third installment of our how-to instructional video series. Today we're going to cover our email notifier. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up so you everybody can follow along with me. All right, here we go. So you can get there a couple of ways here. We can go to contacts and then manage email settings or from the very, very top, you can go to contact and then email as well. So in the upcoming videos, we're going to go through the, the notifiers one by one. We'll do email by itself today to kind of go through each of the three sub tabs, and then we'll probably do the other three or four there in one video. So I'm gonna start us off here. So in general, for all of the notifiers, you'll see three sub tabs called gateway connections and formats. It's the same on all three here. In general, gateway is how do we get to the outside world? Your connections are who's going to be utilizing this, and then formats are what do you want it to look like? So let's go ahead and start with the gateway. The gateway is again, how do we get to the outside world? So we're gonna put in our mail settings here. I went ahead and pre-filled mine out, but you can put your information in here as well. A couple things I wanna point out here. The mail server that you're gonna be using, it might have a limit on the number of outbound messages you can send per day. So keep that in mind if you have a high alarm usage and need a lot of notifications, just keep in mind that you may get some limiting on the email side of things. If you do, give them a call. You guys can work it out on your own there. Uh, so we'll put our settings in there and the password. And then we're gonna test the settings here in just a second. Another thing I'll point out is that please be sure that the email inbox or the email address you're using is just for the alarming because it will clear out the entire email inbox. So we don't want you losing anything important if you're using your personal or your regular email. Again, make sure it's dedicated for just our use and you will be good to go. And then we're gonna make you confirm that there before you can move on. We've got our settings in there. Let's go ahead and test those outgoing server settings. Make sure I typed it in right, I did. We got a success message. If you'll note there, whenever you put somebody's information in, you wanna go ahead and test it. And as part of that test, they'll get sent an email with some instructions on how to interact with our software. So I'll pull that up so you can see what that looks like. Here we go, just came through. And then here you go, tell people what they can do with the email module there. So we can acknowledge, report, uh, can't talk today, request reports or request alarms, which we'll get to in just a second here. Just want to show that to you. Let's go ahead and mess with our incoming server settings there. And then notice a checkbox here. You can allow for incoming emails or not allow. If you want two-way communications, which is you want people to be able to not only receive the alarm event, but also respond and acknowledge through either email, mobile, or voice. Uh, we call that two-way. Then for email, you need to check this right here. And you go back through and configure your email and current incoming server settings there. And then we will test those to make sure that they work. And we'll think for just a quick second here while I test it out. And it did work just fine. You can use the same credentials that we use for the outgoing server here, or if you have different credentials you wanna use, you can specify those here as well. So that's the gateway. Again, how we're gonna to get to the outside world. Let's go ahead and save that. Uh, as a quick note, if you're working in one of our workspaces and you don't save something, you can go click somewhere else and then come back and it will still save where you're at as long as you have not closed the browser. If you close the browser, then you will lose anything that's been unsaved. So our connections here. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add a new one. I already have John in there, but we'll go ahead and add one more here. So we'll just call this Mike and call it Mike's email, Mike1234 at win911.com. And then you can input his schedule here. We have some pre-can schedules, which we'll cover more in a later video, or you can create your own. This is letting the system know when Mike is available, when he should be emailed. If you don't want him emailed at certain times, at night, in the morning, you can configure that. And again, we'll cover that at a later video. And then the connection type here. So standard email will function as normal. Depending on your cell phone provider, some people will choose to use um, SMS to email, which can take a phone number. Let's say you know my phone number was 214-354-9999, and you can do that at verizon.com. 
some of the providers have a service where they will translate emails into or maybe not translate, reformat emails into text messages and send that to a phone. So we can support that. If you'd like to go that route, you can use the email to SMS gateway and then use their phone number attached to whatever their provider email is to accomplish that. But we're just going to go back and use this as normal here. Dot com. There we go. And from here, you can also assign a role to, to Mike. I, I will point out here, let's say we have Mike and Mike has each one of our notica notification methods. So Mike has an email, he has the mobile app set up, he's set up for SMS, and you also have a voice dial out set up as well. The, the roles and schedules are specific to the notifier and the person. So in theory, Mike could have a different schedule for his mobile notifier, a different role or schedule for his SMS notifier, same thing for the voice. So just keep that in mind, you have some flexibility. You don't always have to put Mike as the manager on this specific schedule for the email and mobile and SMS. You can switch that up between the notifiers there. The roles are like labels, but for people, they help to organize groups. That way, if you want to apply any specific logic or rules to the group, you can definitely do that. And you can send Mike a welcome message again, which will show up with the same kind of information there on how to interact with that specific notifier there. Let's go into the other tabs here. So this will give you some options on how you want the alarm information to appear on the subject, which you can see right here. The default is just very generic. You just have an alert. Or you can get more uh, descriptive there, with the alarm descriptor. And that'll give you some more information there. So just upon looking at that email initially, you'll have that in the subject line so they know right away that, hey, look at this, pay attention, this is a big deal. Take care of it, please. Same thing with the content of the message. You have several options there on how you want it to be formatted or how, or how you want it to look depending on the device that's receiving it or any personal preferences. You can have it be more verbose with more information, uh, especially on the condition details there. Or you can have it be very simple and very, very short as far as what it displays there. Again, a lot of uh, flexibility in how you want that to display the information. Same thing on the report format. You can have the default subject, which is just the report, or the report descriptor, which is whatever you configure, it'll show that there. And on the content, same thing as well. You can have it generate an HTML report, which will look like this, or something that's more plain text, which will look like this. <laughs> So we're going to talk about reports and alarm requests uh, throughout. In general, reports provide values while alarm requests provide alarm conditions. So again, reports providing values, numerical values, and the alarm requests are pro providing alarm conditions. And you have some acknowledgement options here. So for the acknowledgements, you can allow somebody to acknowledge on any reply. So they can reply to the email with 1234 or QZY and would accept that and then acknowledge that back to us. Or you can give them a specific password and makes keeping track of who's acknowledging what a little bit easier if you want to go that route. Or if you want to not allow them to acknowledge anything, you can definitely do that as well. They'll be able to receive it, look at it, but not respond to it. And we have our alarm request options here. And this is a way, again, for you to request some information. Uh, again, it's providing numerical, I'm sorry, it's providing alarm conditions, not numerical values there. You can request this on all alarms, or you can do it on specific labels, which we'll cover here in a later video. But if you have labels set up, labels or groupings of alarms, you can pick which labels you want to apply. You might just want safety or building uh, as opposed to all of them. And you can set that up and apply those. And we'll get to that again in a later video here. And then utilizers is a bookkeeping space. Whoever is utilizing this specific connection, you will see that all the information uh, right there for you. All right, let's go to formats, which is what we want the outgoing message to look like here. We give you several pre-canned ones. You can see those there. Again, utilizers up here will show you what's utilizing that bookkeeping space. The pre-canned ones are not editable. You can copy one if you want to make some changes. Let's say I want to change the alarm descriptor, descriptor. I would hit edit copy. It would make a new copy here. Make me rename it. Let's call it underscore copy. And then I'd have some flexibility in then how I wanted to edit and tweak that as far as uh, all these different options here. But we're going to cancel out of that. 
I am sure I want to cancel my changes there. But yeah, feel free to poke through here and you can get an idea of what you want it to look like. Uh, before you put it in edit mode, it'll show you what it will look like here. And then if you go to edit mode, which will copy again, it'll give you the code behind it. And then you can play with that and then save it once we have the, the copy there. Let me rename that. And then it will show you on our copy there, which is right here, you know what that looks like if you made any changes to that. But I'm going to get rid of that just to keep my screen clean here. Okay, so that's about it for the, the email notifier tab. Again, how we get to the outside world, who we're contacting, and what it's supposed to look like. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, feel free to call us or email us. We are here to help. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll have that next video out shortly. Thanks, everybody.